Hello photographers, today we're going to talk about high speed sync, but before we do you need to understand sync speed and what it is, and if you don't, check this video out right here. So what high speed sync is, is a flash function that allows you to use your flash and set a shutter speed that exceeds the sync speed of your camera. Because if you try to take a photograph and you use a shutter speed that is faster than the sync speed of your camera, you get an image that looks like this, and that black bar is the shutter block part of the image sensor while the flash fires. Because when you exceed your sync speed, when you take a photo, you've got both curtains passing over the image sensor with a little slit. And when the flash fires, it's going to be blocked by those curtains and only illuminate part of the image sensor. What high speed sync does is pulse the flash repeatedly as those two curtains are traveling over the image sensor in order to allow light from the flash to hit every part of the image sensor evenly, giving you a photo that has a flash exposure even across the entire image sensor. So that's how it works. And setting it up and using it is actually pretty easy. The first thing you need to do is make sure you have a flash that is high speed sync compatible with your camera. Not every flash out there is high speed sync and not every flash with high speed sync will be compatible with your camera. I have here a Godox TT600 and what's great about this flash is that it's very affordable around 60 or 70 dollars and you can get it with high speed sync for every major camera brand. So once you have a compatible flash using high speed sync is really very simple. You turn your flash on just like you would do anytime you want to use it and depending upon how you're using your flash you may actually turn the high speed sync on on the flash itself particularly if you're putting the flash directly on the camera and there's usually a button that's marked with the little lightning bolt with an H that indicates the high speed sync function and for the Godox TT600 if you press and hold that button then the high speed sync icon will come on and indicate that it is high speed sync ready now if you use Godox flashes then you probably use Godox triggers like this trigger I have here for my EM5 Mark II and if you are using the trigger you don't have to turn the high speed sync on on your flash all you need to do is turn on your triggering unit and then press the sync button in order to activate the high speed sync as indicated by the icon up above in the corner once high speed sync is active you can shoot at shutter speeds over your sync speed and common sync speeds are 1 1 80th 1 200 and 1 250th of a second and once you're prepared to do that it's less about high speed sync and more about practicing good flash photography methods because when you're shooting with flash photography the first thing you need to do is deal with your ambient light and if your ambient light is the sun it can be very bright as it just was a moment ago before these clouds pass through here before you start getting into high speed sync and super powerful flashes considering just getting out of the sun moving into a shaded area where you can use the open shade to your advantage or shooting earlier and later because if you manage your light then you probably won't need to use high speed sync anyway but there are going to be situations where you have to shoot in harsh conditions like the one we're dealing with. So let's talk about how you would manage that. When shooting with flash you always work one light at a time and the first light is our ambient light the sun. And so with my trigger turned off I'm just going to set up and set my settings to get an exposure for the ambient light where I want it. And what I'm going to want is the ambient light set at a nice even exposure so that the sky isn't blown out behind me and so that you can see detail and information in the background. So looking at this right now I'm currently set at ISO 200 f5 and 1 500th of a second and that's showing a pretty good exposure for the background behind me so if we take the photo it looks like this and you can see that is a decent exposure i of course am terribly lit but that's not what we're worried about because we're going to use the high speed sync flash to light me what we're worried about is the ambient light and in this particular shot the ambient light looks good so once you have your ambient light dialed in where you want it then you bring your flash in. So I'm just gonna set the flash up over here and this isn't gonna be a pretty picture, we're just doing this for demonstrative purposes. And I'm gonna take this trigger unit and I'm going to set the power at probably 16th, maybe let's go 1 32nd power because it's pretty close to me. And then we're gonna take a photo using flash at high speed sync. Again, we're at 1 500th of a second, which without high speed sync would result in an image that looks like this. But with high speed sync results in an image that looks like this, which again, this isn't a super pretty great photo, but the point is that I was able to use the flash to light me up 
and balance my exposure against the exposure of the background. Now I could increase or decrease the power of the flash to make this look better. I could also bring in some sort of a diffusion surface, an umbrella or a softbox or something like that, which would make this look even better than it already does. Now there is one thing that you need to understand about high speed sync, and that is that it diminishes the power output of your flash. Remember earlier I said that in order to work, high speed sync pulses the light repeatedly in order to expose the image sensor consistently. And that pulsing means that the flash cannot output the same amount of power that it does when it's able to just put all of the power out in one single very fast, very intense burst. And that means that in some cases you may find that your light is actually not powerful enough for what you're trying to photograph. For instance, a speed light and a single subject like me, you can pretty easily light with high speed sync in a bright light situation. But if you were trying to take a photograph of a group of people in a bright sun situation with one speed light in high speed sync, you're not gonna be able to evenly light that entire group because you're gonna have to have the light farther away in order to cover the entire group. And because it'll be farther away, the power is going to be diminished pretty significantly. In situations like that, you may either A, need more powerful lights, or B, bring in more of the lights that you do have to augment that power and even that light out. Either way, high speed sync is a valuable flash photography tool, and it's something that you should definitely know how to use so that when you need to pull it out of your toolkit, you can, and you can get the kind of results that you need. So that's how high speed sync works. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna learn more about flash photography, check these videos out right here. They'll help you get started taking amazing flash photography photos and then get out there and take some damn photos.